Five-seat SUVs are the fastest growing market segment, and it's all Jeep does. The Renegade is the new entry. The Grand Cherokee is the old guard. So are these Jeeps, and why pick one over the many other options? Well, the biggest thing is we're in snow mode. I mean, that's the most hey, important. Even you know, though this is because it's going to be awful dirt. drifts and wait, no, it's just slush. <laughs> but anyway, it is still winter. It is. It and this is. is your car. People have asked about your car. You know, I'm glad that we haven't reviewed it actually right out of the gate. I was initially hesitant because when the show started, we were all about driving enthusiast cars. Yeah. We've sort of embraced it. SUVs more and more. I mean, especially yeah. the Cayenne is a perfect example of combining sure. the performance, but still SUV. And this is probably considered light off-roading. Oh, this is, best. no, I mean, here's Jeep the thing. Jeep owners will laugh I, I, at I guarantee for this. you, I guarantee you that there is a Jeep group right now that is watching this video because they've seen the tag for the Jeep. They're like, that's not Jeeping. That's not Jeeping at all. Yeah. Let me show you what Jeeping is. And this is not intended is not. to be the world's worst off-roading. That's not no. the point here. No. And there's that something about yeah. a Jeep that you just go, well, I got a Jeep, let's go try that. That's the interesting thing as well about this Renegade that we have, is the question of, is that a Jeep? I have to say right away, this really, really, really wants to be a Jeep. Everywhere in this car are these <laughs> logos, the, the seven the seven slot grill and the two circles. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah, up yeah, here, yeah. they're down here on the speaker. Since 1941, let's connect it, it back to World really War II. It really wants you to know it's a Jeep. Please tell me I'm it a Jeep. It has legacy and I heritage. I want to be a Jeep. They tried really hard, but I don't think it's unsuccessful. Well, I agree with you. That, that is the thing. A lot of times we get into cars where they have tried really hard in the interior yeah. and you just kind of go, stop it. Right. This actually is cool. One of the things that I look for when I sit down in a, in a car we haven't driven is just intuitive nature of controls. I don't have to sit there and really spend a lot of time yeah. figuring things out. Yeah, yeah. That's what this was. It's pretty straightforward, but it's- It shares the platform of the 500X, the Fiat 500X. It does. And you know what this feels like? It feels like one of those old Hollywood movies where you have the kind of demure <laughs> girl that gets turned into something else at the end. I mean, it started out as a Fiat 500, it went to the Fiat 500X thanks to Viagra, and now, thanks to badging and topography and a date on the dash, it's a Jeep. Yay! The music swells and credits. Jeep! To new adventures. To new adventures. Okay, no, stop. You've just this second gone over the edge. You've just this second gone over the edge. That's you too were, much. You were trying, I knew you were trying too That's hard and I was much. okay with it, but now the start stop button in the middle, right around the start stop button on the edge, it says, <laughs> to new adventures. Starbucks going to be an adventure every time. I do have to say, though, honestly, I love the amount of stuff in this. I actually really like these gauges. The center screen is great. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is thirty grand at everything you could want. This does a really good job of having all kinds of tech and gear in it. And you know what? The back seat has got space. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is: What if families only had this? Could could single car families make do with this thing or would they have to go bigger? You know what I was surprised by? Behind the second row, behind those back seats, it still has cargo space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I actually did an airport run in this and got suitcases back there. Big, full-size, hard-size suitcases will still go back there. Oh, you could make, make do with this as your only car, absolutely. It looks really top heavy and spindly and sort of like a newborn fawn trying to find its legs and not sure what it's yeah. all about. But look at yeah. this. I mean, well, this has the look of like a pug dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you're not sure if it's attractive, but you can't help but think it's a little bit cute. It's somehow cute. By the way, what it's color a is lovable this? Lump. What color is this? This is like primer well, gray with gloss on it. I can tell you what Jeep calls it. Tell me, please. They call this color anvil. Anvil. Gray. It's gray. It's gray. With shiny clear coat. What do you want in the mountains? You want power. Yeah, definitely. And unless you have a V8 like you have in this one, I think, all right, well. You know, big 5.7 liter V8. I mean, it's really usable for anything you want to do. And you 
just got grunt in this car. I mean, that's the thing when I drive this versus our V6 Cayenne, I am very well aware of just the sheer grunt you have here. I remember when you were shopping for it, you looked very seriously at the diesel and you looked very seriously at the V6. I did. Or gas mileage yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. But then you specifically saw out. Worldwide oil glut. <laughs> but then Get you the V8. <laughs> Why not? But then you specifically <laughs> sought out the V8 with the eight speed automatic. And this is that ZF mm -hmm. that's in everything. Yep. Audi uses it, BMW uses it. It's a fantastic transmission and it's just as good in this. Yeah. And I think makes this a surprisingly versatile car, especially compared to that Renegade, where the number one thing I don't like about the car is actually the transmission. I actually like this 2.4 liter engine. I really do. We've got almost 200 horsepower here in a 3,500 pound car. I think the engine is yeah. fine. I think the transmission is the issue. Okay, I can see that. I felt the power was a little bit anemic, especially going up hills because cruise control just, it cannot hang on. Well, but but that's the thing though. But then I don't I want think it to downshift. I don't it think it's the engine. I think it, I, you can do freeway speeds in this car in fourth. I've done it. Freeway speeds yeah, in fourth. Can. You've got five other gears left. This is desperate to get into the highest gear possible. That's the thing. I thought this car initially had a CVT driving it around. It's sad to think that this transmission sure. does such a bad job of pulling power out of the engine that you can mistake it for a CVT. But well, you know what? That's interesting. When I was looking up stuff about this thing, this is offered with six engines worldwide. Six. You know, the 1.4 that is offered in the Fiat. It's sure. got that. Got the 1.4 turbo from the Abarth. Mm -hmm. It has a 1.6. You're talking this worldwide. Two though, now, yeah, right? then this 2.4. Okay. Yes, worldwide. This 2.4 naturally aspirated, and then it has two diesels. This doesn't make more, much more power than any of the other engines. Yeah, this isn't a dramatic step up. I agree with you. It'd be nice if there was over 200 in both stats. If I were in this market. I would actually consider this car if that were the car. If, that, if they had the turbocharged engine at the top end, mm, something mm. with real power. Sure. Did and you notice uh, it has a splat on yes. the tachometer? The engine doesn't hit red line, the engine goes splat. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of having some fun here, just Absolutely. pointing for an, a hole full of mud and going for it. Yeah. I'm in a Jeep. The thing that surprised me the most about this car is how much you get for your money. I mean, this starts at 26 grand. Okay. And as we always talk about, the press model has everything they can put on it. Yeah. And in everything they can put on it, it's 30K. And it does have everything you could want. Yeah. This is Jeep kind of doing what Land Rover has done. You know, Land Rover mm -hmm. is known, their history is great off-roaders. But yet, when somebody thinks of a Land Rover now, they think of a luxury truck. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. this is still fully capable, but is very much a luxury truck. Jeep traditionally was kind of a little bit hardcore, a little bit bare bones. Yeah. And you can still find those yeah. out there. But this is a luxury automobile with absolutely. a big ride height. You know, Jeep's the original. Yep. But this does feel like, to me, in many ways, like the American version of the Range Rover. Fully mm -hmm. off-road capable, and yet anything you could want, amenity-wise, is also here. Range Rovers in LA, for example, sure. are the cleanest four-wheel drives. The world's premier four-wheel drive yeah. vehicle. Yeah. And they're the cleanest cars ever. Them. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So I think, all right, well, what's a car that I wouldn't mind getting a little dirty and a little bit Well, we talked about this. We and, talked about the fact that it was going to you know, be your ski car and your bang around yeah. in car, and you didn't want to get something that you were going to be too precious about. What's interesting, though, about yours is, granted, we're talking Grand Cherokee, and this was what, about 55 grand? Is it, was, right? uh, it was just about 50. Okay. Yeah. So you're getting everything you can imagine in a modern luxury automobile here in a big Jeep. Yeah. It's all in here. You got everything. I mean, the heated seats in this are awesome. It's got the heated wheel. You really trick this out. I thought, all right, say I get a Cayenne, and you have one. Uh huh. I got a used one. The new one was the thing you couldn't swing. I get that. I couldn't totally swing the new that. one. Yep. Yep. And I don't know that I even would do this in that Cayenne. You made a comment after driving your Cayenne and then getting in this. You said, yeah, that V8 just makes things effortless. It does, absolutely. And I liked that comment because mm -hmm. unless you do have a turbo car, I just feel like, yeah, get the V8. That's yeah. the one you want. What's your gas mileage been here? 
Average, since this car was new, average like 18, 19, not bad. It's yeah, still it's a V8. Not, I mean, it's a big old V8 SUV. I mean, no. this thing weighs over 5,000 pounds. So. Yeah. yeah. You know what I thought was interesting in looking at this compared to that Renegade? Because it has electric steering, this still, still has hydraulic. Mm hmm. It does. So, you know, I felt electric steering to be very hit or miss. Just because a car has electric steering does not instantly mean it's a bad no. thing. No, absolutely true. Unfortunately, this has an electronic steering rack that has terrible feel. I agree. It, it feels very rubbery mm -hmm. and devoid of anything. Yeah. The, the car goes where you kind of vaguely steer it. But, you know, are buyers of this car going to really care about that? No, are they gonna, not. Are they they're even going to remotely they're, they're, think no, about nobody's, that ever? Nobody past you and I talking about it right no. now, it's never going to come up again. No. This, when you get on a freeway at freeway speeds, it really, you can feel it hunker down and not in an aggressive sports car way where it gets bumpy or, or yeah. jittery at all. It doesn't feel like a truck at that point. It's just a big limousine feeling, yeah. you know, vault on the road. I mean, cool. you can select sport here, but I yes. mean. How sporty are we going to get? Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on. Well, but the big thing I feel like in difference, having driven this and the Renegade on the same road, is this just feels far more planted. Now, granted, it's about 2,000 pounds heavier, but it just feels completely planted with no sense of where the power is coming from. Yeah. That Renegade dances and gets tossed around a lot more just based on scale yeah. and wheelbase. And I feel like it feels front-wheel drive bias. I've ever been as confident in this, on this back road, as I was in your car. And we've got worse tires mm -hmm. and yeah. far less power. This gets tossed around a lot more. But it's fun. It, it's that kind of fun tossed around thing. You yeah, know? It does, I agree. It's not, it's not like, oh, this isn't going to work. And we've passed people on this road because we're just banging around through the mud puddles and drying ourselves. This just has that all wheels are moving all the time. Leave me alone. I'm going. Yeah. You know? Just kind of cheap signature thing. I yeah. Mean, this is, again, this is not four wheel driving. We are certainly no, off road, is, off highway. And it's slick and muddy and slushy, <laughs> and that's about where it is. Good thing we've got the air suspension Thank and God the selector for dial. But that's the thing. But you, you do. You've got the whole air suspension, 45 ride heights. It's not a comfortable ride on this, but. But it's better than this Prius that's coming out. Rather what not are you being doing? Prius. What are you doing back here Let's in see if your I can Prius? Soak him. Can I soak him just, just a little bit? Come on. Unless he brought it out here to shotgun to death. I think he brought it out here just to see if he could get it stuck and let it die. Whoops, sorry, honey. Yeah. Prius is stuck. This thing yeah. will do the same thing a CX-5 would. Mm -hmm. It'll do the same thing a CRV would. Yeah. Would you take those cars doing what we're doing? I guess I'm asking a versatility We're question. talking about brand perception, too. Right. Because right. do I think a CX-5 couldn't do this? No, I'm sure it could. I bet you it the would C probably be yeah, fine. The CRV would do it, too. But I would be much more prone intellectually to be like, well, let's just take the Renegade, bang around in the snow, than those. And that's entirely brand perception. And that, yeah. to some degree, talks about what we were saying about this being a successful execution of the brand on a platform that, let's be honest, is the big Fiat 500. Right, right. I wasn't sure I'd like this car as much as I do. Just got out of the Grand Cherokee, which I like to say is owned by the Italians, designed yes. in Detroit, and has a motor built in Mexico, so it's truly a world car. It's a world car. car. <laughs> but so is this. I mean, it's Jeep, it's got some heritage, and... No, it doesn't. It has heritage because they stamped it on the side. Well, <laughs> it does because of its surprising off-road. Okay. I mean, okay, yes, they, have, they have put some of their know-how. No, you're right, they put their, their off-road know-how into this car to make it usable in conditions like this. I, I will agree with that. I, That's what I'm, yeah. I mean, it's a brand new model to this yeah. Jeep family. And yeah. I think actually a welcome one over these other two warts on the lineup that they've got, the Compass and the Patriot. I don't even understand why they still make those cars yeah. well, now having introduced this. You have to have something to refuse at the rental counter. I think they should forget those two cars and be about four cars. The Grand Cherokee, the regular Cherokee, the Wrangler, and this. If you want an entry-level yeah. Jeep, and it can do stuff. I mean, we've yeah. got it in snow, yeah. we're bang, locked. banging around. So yes, as you're right, it doesn't have heritage in terms of a model. No, not at all. But it certainly has the Jeep brand thing going for it. It does, it and does. And it's surprising like this. I'm, I'm going, all right, it's not well, as skittery and yeah. terrible as I thought it was going to be. 
kind of felt like this was a branding exercise. I really and I have did. to admit, it is. They've, it done, is. they've, they've it done is. ridiculous amounts of branding exercise yeah. in this car. There's no question. However, they've still made it capable and actually pretty fun. Well, the Renegade has surprised me. The Jeep personality and heritage begins to be revealed when you throw some light off-roading at it. This car feels tougher than it initially lets on, which is what Jeeps are all about. My only wish is for more power, a turbo for high altitude and mountain driving. I guess that's what a 9-speed transmission is for. The Renegade is better equipped and more fun than I expected. And if you got that, you'd wind up with a CUV that's not really more capable than the competition, but it is more interesting. I love my Grand Cherokee. It's not too big, but it still has great space inside. It feels well-built and it runs strong. I suppose maybe a bit more willing to take more abuse than a Cayenne. There's not much I would change about this car. It's my ski truck and our production vehicle. The Grand Cherokee is a luxury truck. It really is the American Range Rover in many ways. I mean, it's rougher around the edges than the Brit, but it's ready for a night out on the town or in the jungle. I can see why Paul bought one. Thanks for watching and subscribe because there's lots more on the way.